It's the third quarterfinal of the Crossover Classic, part of Feast Week here on ESPN. We've got the 15th ranked West Virginia Mountaineers taking on the preseason favorite in the Summit League, the Jackrabbits of South Dakota State. Well, two teams have already won here today, and uh, well, Western Kentucky's Josh Anderson have a little fun, but it's only one down, two to go for the Hilltoppers as they look to win three games in three days and emerge as the champions here in Sioux Falls. This is what happened this afternoon. Memphis, extremely impressive, led by Boogie Ellis, took care of St. Mary's, and Western Kentucky got by Northern Iowa. We've got two more to go tonight, followed by VCU and Utah State after this one, also on ESPN2. Along with Chris Patola, I'm Doug Sherman. Thanks so much for being here. And boy, we're going to get a chance to watch Oscar Shibwe, one of the terrific freshmen in the entire country a year ago. He was. He and uh, Derek Culver make up, at least on paper, the most imposing front court in America. West Virginia leading the country and rebounding last year. These two guys are going to be a massive load all season long, but certainly here tonight for South Dakota State. And Chris, let's take a look at tonight's starting lineups brought to you by Sanford Health. As we are underway, and the new point guard for the Mountaineers has the basketball, Miles McBride, making just his third collegiate start, a sophomore who was very good as a freshman a year ago, but this changes the look for the Mountaineers this year, Chris. Well, he's a pro, and he's been the most impressive guy for them in practice to this point, but there's the offensive rebounding. Derek Culver has had an outstanding summer. Bob Huggins expecting him to have just a massive junior campaign. And for the Jackrabbits, keep your eye on number 15, Noah Friedel, a sophomore from T South Dakota. Preseason All-Summit League first team who can really shoot it from the outside. This is Friedel with the basketball. The Jackrabbits playing the first of six scheduled games here in this building. There's a nice move to the bucket by Friedel. Friedel, a great freshman year last year, really finished the season so well. Douglas Wilson, their best player, got hurt towards the end of the year. Last three games, Friedel was phenomenal. And that's... And that's where Doug the key. They got a defensive rebound tonight, South Dakota State. Arians feeds the post. Shot off the mark by Matt Detlinger. Mountaineers with it. Number 11 is Emmett Matthews, Jr. Culver pulls the trigger. How will this work with these two bigs playing together more often this year? Well, it was uncomfortable at times last year. Uh, but when you have, I mean, look, they're, they're two of the best players in the Big 12. Their front line is the most imposing in the country. So you have to find a way. And I think a year under their belt, they had a good summer together, a good fall camp, if you will. And I think they feel comfortable. Look, it, this team is about rebounding, Doug. I mean, they again, they led the Big 12 in rebounding last year. 15 offensive rebounds a game was first in the country. And that's a good place to start for Bob Huggins. The sixth all-time winningest coach in college basketball history. Fourth among active coaches. A West Virginia original. And I get the sense, A, he really likes his guys this year. And B, I think they like him and really reflect him. Says it's the best roster he's had at West Virginia since 2010. Of course, that team made it to the Final Four that year. Hard to believe it's been 10 years. Deshaun yeah. Butler and the boys yeah. made it all the way to the Final Four before that devastating injury. Three ball by Baylor Shireman. Matthews, mm. nothing but net. This is the guy who's got to take a step. If, if West Virginia is going to be a Final Four team, Emmett Matthews has to take a step. I thought he regressed last year. You know, he's so athletic, 6'7", has all the tools. Gotten a little bit stronger. Here he is with another clean look. 
Left that one well short. Scramble for the ball comes to McNeil. Mid-range jumper too strong and a foul on the rebound. And you know what, Chris? I thought Emmett Matthews spoke out very thoughtfully about his teammates' willingness to sacrifice certain aspects of college life for the greater good and their health and well-being of all, and that was something echoed by their coach to us yesterday as well. You know what blew me away, Doug, yesterday is how many of those coaches said how proud they were of their guys. Yes. That they didn't once have to tell them anything protocol-wise. Like, guys bought in immediately. They want to be out here playing the game of basketball. And, and really, I mean, they didn't have to coach them at all. Mm -mm. The guys were willing to do and sacrifice what they had to do to make this season happen. Yeah, Chris, I sensed it was genuine gratitude on the part of each of the coaches we spoke to. Yeah. There's the high-low. Very nicely done. Culver inside to Sheepway for his first two. Now, well, if those two can impact as much scoring as they do rebounding and defensively, there's no reason West Virginia can't have a tremendous season. Friedel strong to the bucket, and he'll have a chance for three. Well, and part of the reason they struggled a little bit offensively, there wasn't a whole lot of room to operate because West Virginia couldn't make a perimeter shot last year. But here's this high-low, and this is where these two guys have become very comfortable. I mean, he gets them so far up the lane. Sheway pushes Dentlinger so far up the lane and just a good touch. And then here's Friedel finishing through contact. And if you're Sheway, you know, you need to go up and try to make a play at the basket. There's no reason kind of to reach in there. Friedel grew up about 20 minutes south of where we are here in Sioux Falls. He used to come to this building and watch Nate Walters tear it up for the Jackrabbits. He is a true Jackrabbit lifer. Drive and dish goes out of bounds. Friedel the turnover, and the Mountaineers will have it when we come back. The 15th ranked West Virginia Mountaineers with the early lead here in Sioux Falls. but it never gets old. I haven't heard it enough for the last 24 <laughs> hours from you. It's about time. I've been saving it until it's on the air. I don't want your head to get too big that we have to have a team to put the headset on you. You know. Just glad that I don't have to be as close to you as I normally am. I've got uh, got more room than a Manhattan apartment here. I know. A little elbow a, room. It took a pandemic to get you uh, eight feet away from me. It's all right. Now, the uh, my friend here, former Army cadet and we are just happy to be back and watching and enjoying college basketball it's been a long time for the entire sport and we are glad to have our seat at the table here off the bounce deuce mcbride for two he's their best player he's been their most consistent player this summer his leadership has taken a step and he gives you that edge. He just refuses to lose in games and practice. I love Deuce McBride. Well, he was a big time college football recruit as a quarterback at Moeller High School in Cincinnati. Foot injury prompted him to stop playing football going into his senior year. So he played just basketball. And uh, so he turned down some big time football offers to come to West Virginia and hoop it up. Comes from a great family has taught him well, raised him right. And you saw flashes last year, Doug. I mean, he, you know, you saw when he came into a game, the game changed. And, you know, the thing with West Virginia last year, th this game, it's a simple game. It's about getting layups and free throws. Mm -hmm. The team that makes the most layups and free throws is typically going to win in the game of basketball. And, you know, the three-point shot has kind of overcome the mid-range game. But... You're not going to win consistently making threes. It's about layups and free throws. And the hard part is getting those consistently. And West Virginia got them. They did the hard part. They just couldn't finish at the basket, and they couldn't make free throws. Culver chases down his own miss. Step back for McNeil. That's been one of the other storylines in the preseason coming into the year for West Virginia. How are they going to shoot the basketball from three? Mm. Nifty little step back off the mark by Shireman, but there's the putback, and the Jackrabbits pull back within two. 
You know, the one thing you knew about South Dakota State coming in is they weren't going to be afraid. I mean, this is a program that's been in a lot of big games, and they've won a lot of big games. And bucket by the Nebraska transfer, Charlie Easley, who was granted a waiver to play immediately after leaving the Cornhuskers last year. That's the first time we've seen Douglas Wilson get a chance at the offensive end. He is the reigning conference player of the year in the summit and is the preseason favorite as well. What do the Jackrabbits need to do to get him more involved? Well, that's the, the thing tonight is, is South Dakota State actually plays through their two bigs. Wilson, who's now going to the bench, and Dentlinger. And you're playing a team that does the same thing, except their two guys are a lot bigger and taller. So, that you know, you try to put him out on the perimeter a little bit. He goes hard with his left hand and draws a foul. He's actually a much better offensive player than they expected when they got him from the junior college ranks. Jordan McCabe into the game for the Mountaineers along with Taz Sherman. Also on the floor, the redshirt freshman Jalen Bridges. And the freshman Cottrell misses his first collegiate shot. Isaiah Cottrell, freshman from Las Vegas, highly touted. Wow, strong move to the bucket. And the lefty flushed by Shireman. Well, in just the eyes. He didn't even really give you a shot fake. He gave you the eyes, got the defense to get out of stance. And what an attack of the basket. Bridges. And a foul on the rebound. And you watch, he just kind of shows you the eyes, a little hesitation, and then the freshman, Cottrell, has no shot. Once you take that step towards that offensive player, Shireman knows, only a sophomore. And, you know, you go back to last season, Doug, he was, Eric Henderson saying he was, he was constantly trying to hit home runs. And he, he finally had to settle in and learn it's okay to hit a single every once in a while. Good patience on that on that hesitation and drive there. Eric Anderson played for Greg McDermott in his playing days at Wayne State. Greg McDermott was supposed to be here with his Creighton Blue Jays, but uh, one of seven teams over the course of the last two months to have to opt out for one reason or another. And it's been an amazing job by the staff here in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, to make sure that, well, when Wichita State landed here two days ago and tested yeah. positive, had a couple of guys. They were able to replace them quickly with VCU, and we'll see the Rams coming up in the second part of our evening doubleheader tonight. How about this take here by Winjet? Gets himself into position. What a great defensive play on Jalen Bridges, and that's uh, <laughs> takes a lot of courage to step in on that, especially a guy who's airborne. Even if I could have gotten in position, I wouldn't have gotten there. <laughs> Not a chance. I'm happy over here with plexiglass around me. Yeah, well, you're well protected. <laughs> Alex Arians. Step back three, winge it. Another chance inside. And there's the all-conference forward, Detlinger. That's their strength. Everything for South Dakota State starts with their two bigs. Mountaineers have cooled off, surrendered the lead. They take it right back on the first made basket for Isaiah Cottrell. Arians keeps the dribble, goes right to the bucket. Nobody stopped him, but he couldn't make the layup. Sherman rises up. Easily bottled up, able to get it back out. Shot clock under 20. Good ball movement to find Winget nice. for three. And it starts with the skip pass, and then you've got the defense in scramble, and what spacing creating the corner three. Well, this is a South Dakota State team that won 22 games a year ago. 
and are the preseason favorite in the summit. And it really is not a surprise that they are going toe-to-toe -to -toe early with the 15th ranked team in the country. Well, and they're doing it inside and out. Matt Dentlinger, the, the big fella on the inside, 6'8 junior, doing work on the offensive glass. South Dakota State getting after it. Signage is very important at any MTE, <laughs> multi-team event. And the folks here at the Bad Boy Mowers Crossover Classic have really had to work hard in the last couple of weeks to keep everything current. And welcome everybody to Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Doug Sherman along with Chris Patola. We have Let's some face. Here we are. Hoops, Hoops is back. College Hoops. That's an elbow know. room. <laughs> Tell you what, you mentioned the Army. I've been in some Humvees, but I'm feeling well protected here tonight. My goodness, look at this. Well, there's the setup. We are well off the court but have wonderful seats. The folks here in Sioux Falls decided just a couple of days before this event not to allow any spectators. This is about a 3,200 seat building, so it's very intimate. They love their basketball here. This, this building was built seven years ago and it's got a great basketball vibe about it. It really does. I mean, look, anything that embraces the tradition of this great game, I'll buy into, but you know, you walk the concourse and, and just the history that's, that's represented. They've done a great job. I mean, you said this before we went to break. They've done an outstanding job this tournament. Lee Miller, who, you know, runs the battle for Atlantis down there and has run this and, and as you said, made the adjustments teams coming in. It's been unbelievably well done, given the circumstances. There you see uh, from where it began back in March and all the changes that have gone on. I mean, just here in Sioux Falls, the teams that were originally in this eight-team field when it was scheduled to be in the Bahamas, Duke, Creighton, Texas A&M, Utah, Ohio State, and Dayton are all out, as well as Wichita State. And the teams that have been added over the last several weeks, South Dakota State, Northern Iowa, Western Kentucky, St. Mary's, Utah State, and again, VCU three days ago had no idea it was going to be in South Dakota, and here they are. Yeah. I've said it's like, uh, you know, this point in college basketball has been almost like a pickup game style here. Mm -hmm. You know, I was saying to Mike Rhodes yesterday, there's a pickup game AAU feel to it where, hey, do you have a team? Bring your team over. Let's. Let's lace them up, check ball, and let's play. It, it's kind of had that vibe, and it's going to continue, I would imagine, to have that vibe as we move forward here. Nancy Douglas Wilson, some of the numbers on him as he made that second free throw. South Dakota State with a five-point lead. And, you know, for the coaches and their staff, they have had to adjust on the fly as well in terms of scouting report. I mean, you worked on the Duke staff for a number of years. You know how much preparation those guys do to get a game plan, and they have to tear it up every other day. But I tell you what, I have not heard one complaint. Everybody's just happy to be here. Miles McBride with his second mid-range pull-up. And you know what I heard, Chris, was that the University of Rhode Island, which is finally playing tonight, I think over on ESPN right now, they went through nine possible opponents before <laughs> finally getting matched up with Arizona State. Nine! Coach Cox said it was nine. That's what I mean. I mean, it's, now we're talking the pickup game. Just, just, hey, whoever shows up, check ball and let's go. Now these players and these coaches and the staffs are very much in a bubble here. Thanks to Sanford Health, they've done a marvelous job. They're all in one hotel. Shot clock down to seven. McNeil rattles it home. You know, the thing is, too, Doug, like, you know, somebody, you could have a player test positive tomorrow and you, you're off for 14 days. So you might as well play all out. Anytime you take the floor this season, play all, all out, give it everything you have. Because you never know. This thing could shut down tomorrow for whatever reason. And the NCAA has said that the threshold to be considered for an NCAA tournament bid is 13 regular season games. And I have heard a couple of coaches here this week, Chris, 
who actually wonder if some teams aren't even going to get to that threshold this year. So you take it a day at a time, a game at a time. How about McBride? He has found the soft spot of that Jackrabbits defense. Well, he, he's a competitive dude. He's got an edge to him. And, and you talk to, to all these coaches on West Virginia staff, and they'll tell you just in practice the tone he sets. And how about, how about Douglas Wilson and South Dakota State really attacking the basket? He had a terrific season last year. Here's, here's Sean McNeil getting himself into that mid-range, playing with so much confidence right now. And there's McBride again in that mid-range. Wilson listed at 6'7", 210 pounds. He is extremely long. A senior out of Hoover High School from Des Moines. And he completes the three-point play. Well, that was the sense we got from Eric Henderson and his staff that, again, you're coming up against the 15th-ranked team in the country, a big physical team, yeah. but they're not going to back down. Uh, they said, look, we're not trying to get into an arm wrestling contest with West Virginia. We're going we're gonna to block out. We're going to do our stuff. We'll be as physical as we can. We're going to force them to shoot threes. And if they make 10 threes tonight, we'll tip our hat and wish him well. We'll step away from Sioux Falls, South Dakota. The Jackrabbits up by two. Doug. Private. Uh, well, look, you're going to have to earn that first. They call that basic <laughs> training, Doug, and I don't think you have the will, my friend. You're right, I don't. And I think Dallin and the boys know that, too. Well, Dallin doesn't have it either, to be fair. The over-under <laughs> on you and Dallin Cuff in basic training is about oh. three hours. Oh, yeah. And I'm taking the under. I am, too. 22-20, the Jackrabbits out of the Summit League with a two-point lead over the West Virginia Mountaineers. Picked third in the preseason in the Big 12, but ranked 15th in the preseason nationally. But the Mountaineers, they've had a little foul trouble here early. We haven't seen much of Oscar Shibwe or Gabe Osaboyan. They both have two fouls, and so Coach Huggins has maybe had to go a little deeper into that bench. But he's had to go away from the two big lineup. It, what has really hurt West Virginia has been the spacing and the ball movement of South Dakota State. They're, they're getting West Virginia's defense in rotation. They're playing a lot of chase. And that's what's led to the drives and the finishes at the basket for South Dakota State. And Bride picks up full court on Alex Arians, the redshirt junior guard from Madison, Wisconsin. The other thing, too, Doug, is South Dakota State's taking very good care of the basketball, which is always a key against West Virginia. Look at that pass. Great feed by Friedel and the easy throwdown by Detlinger. Cottrell. They don't step out to guard him, and he misses the three. And they're going to give him that all night long. This is violation. This is what South Dakota State does best, is they pass the basketball. They are an outstanding passing team. You've got a freshman big who overhelps there. You don't need to hedge that. Just allow Jalen Bridges to stay in front. Actually, that was Taz Sherman. You overhelp. You've got two guys guarding one, and there's the drop off. And that's not the first time we've seen Cottrell struggle at the defensive end in his first collegiate game. Culver. Over the right shoulder, no. One and done for this West Virginia team that has been so good in recent years on the offensive glass. Good hustle by Culver with the chase down block. Well, the 2K Empire Classic brought to you by Continental. Currently on ESPN, we mentioned Rhode Island with its ninth potential opening day opponent. They are taking on Remy Martin and the uh, Sun Devils. And then I'm curious to see third-ranked Villanova take on Boston College tonight. Villanova, one of those teams, along with Baylor and Gonzaga, who seem to be the consensus preseason national championship favorites. What do you think at this point, Chris? 
I think Baylor right now, first of all, I think the Big 12, since we're here with West Virginia, is the best conference. I don't think there's any doubt. And I think a big part of it is you look at the four best teams in that Big 12, Baylor, Kansas, Texas Tech, and West Virginia, they're all old. You know what I mean? Like, their, their best players are, are old. Those teams are old. And I think in this season, to have old teams that can adapt to whatever comes, I think is a big, is a huge benefit. So to me, to start the year, I, I think Baylor's the best team. But, you, you know, the one understated thing about them is, is not having Freddie Gillespie. It was such a huge part of who they were last season. Taz Sherman with a three-point bucket to put the Mountaineers back on top. And a lot of the things you said about the Big 12 Conference can be said about the Big 10 Conference. Yeah. A lot of old, experienced, very good teams. And so if it's not the Big 12 that comes into the year as the best, it would probably be the Big 10. Wilson denied the first time, keeps working, missed the second time. And Derek Culver, the 6'10 junior from Youngstown, Ohio, clears the glass. Quickly the other way, McNeil, no. Sherman. McNeil again for three. Tough shot. One and done this time for South Dakota State. McBride off the bounce. Man. Who says the mid-range game is gone? Well, not only that, they're, they're, it's off the bounce, too. You know, what, typically percentages go down when you put that ball on the floor into a J. And for McBride, he's so good putting it on the ground and pulling up. And how about that shot? Nice use of the window by Noah Friedel. And their final three games last year, Noah Friedel had 26, 23, and 35. Is that good? They say it is. He averaged over 12 a game as a freshman. He tracks down the long rebound, takes it away from his teammate Matt Mims, a reserve guard from Cedar Rapids just into the game. This is Mims. Dentlinger. Mim stuck his nose in there, but picks up the personal foul. Sixteen foul on the Jack Rabbits, and so Mims and Dentlinger will go out. Back into the game, David Winget. Also, Alex Arians returns for the Jack Rabbits. More substitutions both ways. Emmett Matthews back in. And Jalen Bridges, the redshirt freshman from Fairmont, West Virginia, takes a seat. McNeil, McBride, and Sherman around the perimeter for West Virginia. This is McNeil. Nice job to get the open look, but he just couldn't finish. Arians has a step. Has it knocked away. Ball loose. Timeout call. Nice job by Luke Apple to get on the deck and secure that basketball. Yes, it was. ESPN's exclusive. You knew uh, JC would mention the Queen City in there somewhere if he gets a Cincinnati shout out. We were just talking during the break how well Friedel has been playing. His four assists are halfway to a career high. Yeah. Well, and, and the guys just mentioned it. You know, South Dakota State wanted to force West Virginia to make threes, which they haven't, but they've shot them. And they had to at least hold their own on the glass, certainly the, the defensive glass, and they're plus three in that differential right now. And again, Oscar Shibwe has played only four minutes. He picked up two early fouls and has been on the bench ever since. Shot clock violation. I don't think anybody on South Dakota State knew it. Nobody was standing up, shouting. 
Normally you got a call, a late shot clock, you know, under five, you yell green or, you know, there's some sort of call. Nobody, I don't think anybody knew on their sideline. Sherman and McBride out there with McNeil, Culver, and Matthews. Mountaineers in their old gold uniforms with the blue lettering. Aaron Pass finds its way to McNeil. Sherman and McNeil were brought in last year to help fix the shooting problems for West Virginia. And they did not shoot it particularly well all year long. As a team, they were at under 30%. Layup by Apple. But during the offseason, Chris, everybody around the Mountaineers said they both shot the basketball very well. But until you do it in the game, it's just talk. Well, you, you'll remember, he, he got really sick on their trip to Spain before last season and, and didn't really recover until mid-season, which was too late. And there's another guy, uh, uh, Tad Sherman. Both those guys have really shot it well, both playing with a ton of confidence. And, you know, Sherman's confidence really soared after he went for 20 against top-ranked Baylor last year, and that helped to springboard him into the offseason. Winget, nice spin. And a foul. We'll send him to the free throw line. Uh, this will let you exhale a little bit. Two threes from the two guys who you expected to be shooters coming in. There's McNeil and then Taz Sherman. He's more of a scorer than a shooter, and he makes tough shots. And how about that, the difficulty on that, the step back into the three. That'll allow you to exhale a little bit. You know, there's so much pressure coming into this season on West Virginia to make shots, and there's been so much talk about it and so much hope that they would do that that, you know, I think you, you have a chance here going into the half where your two guys you, you thought were going to be those shooters coming in, knocking down two threes. Winget, the Memphis transfer, pulls South Dakota State back within three, final 220 of the half in our third quarter final of the Bad Boy Moore's crossover classic here in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Sherman's pass out of bounds, but we've got a whistle and a foul against Shireman trying to deal with Culver on the low block. Well, Friday, settle in with a plate of leftovers for our college football triple header. Number 13, Iowa, number 17, Texas. Kick things off at noon Eastern, 11 a.m. Central on ABC. Then number two, Notre Dame squares off against number 19, North Carolina. And then at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific on ESPN. It's the rivalry game between 15th ranked Oregon and Oregon State in Corvallis. Have you seen Sam Howell play quarterback yet? I have. North Carolina. I have. He can really sling it, Doug. The Tar Heels are back into the rankings, back into the national rankings after a uh, a lot of hype coming into the season. They were the one team maybe people thought could give Clemson a run. Of course, Notre Dame uh, added to the ACC for the year, but Carolina's going to be a tough out. And how about your Black Knights of the Hudson? Yes. They're pretty good. Yes, sir. Clearly the best uh, football team college-wise in upstate New York. There's no question about that. Heck. Although Buffalo might have something to say about that. I mean, Liberty beat the brakes <laughs> off of Syracuse. Imagine what Army would do. My goodness. All right, let's get back to this game. <laughs> West Virginia with a four-point lead. The Jackrabbits of South Dakota State University coming off a 22-win season where they won the Summit League Championship. Giving the Mountaineers all they can handle. Friedel turns it over. Here comes WVU McNeil. Off the back iron. Nice rebound by Arians. He is their point guard, but he averages over five rebounds a game a year ago. Here he goes into the paint. This is the Memphis transfer Winget. Yeah. Little step back, no. He wanted that left hand. He, he should have just continued to go to the middle and, and get kind of that swinging right hand hook and, and 
you know, wanted to come back left. Well, Kedri and Johnson just came off the bench and fired up an air ball for West Virginia. Not a good way to start your year. I'm guessing Coach Huggins is thinking, why do you shoot that? Get into the flow of the game. It's not going to keep you on the floor. Final minute of the first half. Tough pass, knocked away. Tied up, possession arrow going the other way. West Virginia basketball. Bob Huggins has been to the Final Four twice. Once with Cincinnati back in 1992. Love hearing him tell the stories about Kenyon Martin. Yeah. He has such reverence for that man. And then, of course, 10 years ago, as we talked about, he led West Virginia to the Final Four. And the ingredients seem to be there this year to at least give it a shot. Mm. McBride, Ooh. what a crossover, and what a finish. A chance for three. I'll tell you what, man, he is, he's so compact and in control and on balance. I mean, watch this. Saucy, mm, refuses the screen, and then just kind of stops on a dime with the one foot. The modified Euro step. Chris, that's a crossover classic. You are on the money. <laughs> Pandemic be damned. Doug Sherman, game one. Still working the rust off. Is on fire. <laughs> but do you know what kind of an athlete you have to be to stop on balance like he just did? I mean, that is tough. Shireman picks up his dribble. Shot clock down to 10. Final 15 seconds of the half. Ooh. Shireman, little step back. Offensive rebound, wins it. They've got time. No need to hurry. Friedel to the rim. And the throw down by Wilson. McBride, no. South Dakota State showing some fight here in Sioux Falls. 37-32 our score. The 15th ranked Mountaineers with their hands full in this third quarter final in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. We'll send it back to the studio and see you back in just a few minutes for half number two. Largest city in the state of South Dakota and the Jackrabbits from South Dakota State trail 15th ranked West Virginia by five. And Chris, you'd have to be impressed by what we've seen out of the Summit League champs. You would. I mean, look, neither team shot it exceptionally well, which first game of the season you would expect. But but here's what they did. I mean, their front court of Douglas Wilson and Matt Dentlinger outscoring that front line of West Virginia 12 to 5. Part of that, Oscar Sheepway only played four minutes. And South Dakota State plus six on the glass over the Big, Big 12's top rebounding team from last season. So... They've been tough, they've been physical, they've shared the basketball, and their turnovers, they have seven, haven't really hurt them. South Dakota State starts with a basketball here in the second half. The winner of this quarterfinal advances to a semi tomorrow afternoon against the winner of our final game of the day between Utah State and VCU, which will come up following this one on ESPN2. So Culver picks up his second foul very early on in the second half. Well, and, and part of that is, you know, he got a lot of the basketball, which is why he's upset and Bob Huggins is upset. But you get that call because you put your arm in there. You know, he kind of stuck his hand in there, went at, at 6'10", just be big, force Wilson, who is three inches shorter, force him to throw that over the top. Miles McBride with the basketball, getting his third career start tonight. The 6'2 sophomore out of Moeller High School in Cincinnati. Sheway. Friedel comes away with it. Noah Friedel putting up an impressive stat line so far tonight. Doing a little bit of everything as he normally does for South Dakota State. 
Wilson backing his way into the lane. Cut off nicely by Culver. Man. Tough contested shot is good by Matt Detlinger. They play so well together. Big to big passing. Detlinger moves to an open spot to catch that, to receive it from Wilson. And then what a tough shot over length. Detlinger averaged 12.6 rebounds a year ago. A 4.0 student in mechanical engineering. Bucket at the other end by Matthews. Arians gathers but left it short. Here comes Matthews the other way for the Mountaineers. McNeil gives it back. Lefty corner three, no good. Culver high for the rebound. Goes around Detlinger and lays it in. He's so skilled. So skilled, goes high, two-handed rebound. And then a nice use to the other side of the basket. Wilson trying to answer at the other end, can't do it. Culver avoids picking up what would be a third foul. McBride, he's been money from 10 feet. 13 points to lead all scores. Tough shot by Alex Arians, no. Culver grabs another rebound. The lead is eight for West Virginia. Friedel the lob and oh, geez. Wilson just could not corral it. You gotta catch it first. It's not a great pass, and it was a bullet, but you gotta catch it at the very least, come down with it. You had a wide open layup. McBride got a foul, and again, a chance for a three-point play. Now these bigs have been a big part of the storyline here in this game. Here's Dentlinger on the post entry, and then watch him keep moving. Circles to the top of the arc there, gathers himself, and that's a tough shot over Shibway. And then here on the other end, two-handed rebound at its peak, and then just a good little touch, shows you his skill, Derek Culver. Deuce McBride, now with 16 points, his career high came last January, when he went for 22, and a win over 22nd ranked Texas Tech. Bodies fly, Jack Rabbits keep it, shot clock under 20. Back cut, Arians dump it off, Detlinger for two. Nice pass. You know, Deuce McBride is a different kind of player, but he reminds you, a lot. he's a Bob Huggins guard. No doubt, I was just thinking the same thing. Reminds you a lot of Javon Carter, Tariq yep. Phillip. Detlinger may have gotten a piece of that shot. Now we've got a held ball. I was thinking the exact same thing. Defensively, he gets up in you. He does. He does. And this is what South Dakota State does best. They're such a good passing team. The back cut, and then just a drop off. The help comes late from Osaboyan as Shibwe rotated over. And isn't it true, Chris, that when you face a defense that gets up after you, that does open up opportunities for passing lanes and cutting lanes? Well, that back cut is the pressure release. So when you're being denied on the wing, you back cut, and that's the play that's there. And then, you know, they've worked. South Dakota State, you know you've got two shot blockers in Shibway and Culver. You know they're coming over on penetration, and that's where the nice little presence of mind to drop it off when the help comes late. Well, Bob Huggins told us yesterday that uh, Oscar Shibwe certainly enjoyed his newfound celebrity during the uh, summertime, that he had such a marvelous freshman year. And, you know, in the state of West Virginia, the Mountaineers, football and basketball are it. And uh, when you get to be on that stage, 
you're going to have an awful lot of eyeballs on you, but uh, she weighs back to work. Now that the season has finally come, he can start his sophomore year. He did say in different words, he probably could have had a more productive summer. <laughs> <laughs> but he's such an easygoing guy. We were asking Coach Huggins about Isaiah Cottrell, the freshman big. And he said, you know, part of it is for Cottrell, the development is the physicality of the game. He says, you almost wish that Shibwe and Car uh, Culver were, more, were bigger jerks than they are. Right. You know, that they would be harder on him in practice. Shibwe, just an easygoing guy. There he is. Ball poked away by Osaboyan. This is the largest lead of the night. Mountaineers by 10. Shibwe carving out space against Wilson. Didn't get the entry pass. McBride is fouled by Arians. Mountaineers trying to get a little separation here in this third quarter final. Welcome back to the Bad Boy Mowers crossover classic. Our third quarter final is part of Feast Week presented by Lowe's. Two games this afternoon. Memphis fell behind 7-0, but then yeah. Boogie Ellis happened, and he and the Tigers really established themselves here this afternoon. Boogie Ellis happened, and, and I thought their length and athleticism imposed its will. You know, Penny Hardaway going to full court pressure, changing up his defensive look. I, I thought that's what changed the game. And, and same with Western Kentucky. That's it. You got some athletic, long teams going at it in that Memphis Western Kentucky game. And that game to me felt a little bit like an 8 9 kind of first round NCAA yeah. tournament game. Yeah. But the Panthers lost to the Hilltoppers, and so our first semifinal is set for tomorrow between Memphis and Western Kentucky. St. Mary's and UNI will play in a second round game. Meanwhile, Bob Huggins' team on a 10-2 run over the last three and a half minutes to get a little bit of separation here, Chris. What do you think of the offense West Virginia has been running so far tonight? Well, you know, I think they're trying to figure out who they are. Really, I mean, I, you know, it's it's been hard to tell because they've kind of bounced a little bit back and forth, uh, particularly with lineups. They haven't played the two bigs as much as I think we expected. McNeil and more so McNeil, but McNeil and Sherman start to hit some shots as Friedel knocks one down. And then Deuce McBride, you know, as I said at the top, he's their best player, their most consistent player, and he has not disappointed. McNeil, long range three. The 6 3 junior from Union, Kentucky, into double figures. Friedel left his feet, bailed out on a pass to Arians. Friedel with another rebound. Mm. You know, at the rate he's going, triple double is he's not tough. out of the realm of possibility. He is tough. He is a shot maker, a scorer, sneaky athlete. What a player. 12 points, seven rebounds, five assists so far. Plays so hard. McNeil with the left hand no. Big rebound by Arians. So after falling behind by 12, the Jackrabbits seem to have stemmed the tide a bit. Wilson, wow, for two. He is really strong. I mean, really strong. 6'7", about 210 pounds, stronger than he even looks. Uses his body so well. And you know, when South Dakota State got Wilson out of junior college, they didn't realize how good he was going to be. Yeah. Well, Eric Henderson saying that if he touches it, they feel like they're going to have a good possession. They want him to touch it as early as possible in a possession. Arians with his sixth rebound. Friedel. Deuce McBride feeds it inside. Back out front, Sherman. 
Oh, Savoy and high low. That is some pretty good offense. Yeah, and, and that's where Shibwe is at his best. When, when he's down there in that paint, you get that high low, and he's just such a big body. He's built like a Greek god. Well, he shapes up so nice, makes himself a good target. And then with those good hands, able to catch and finish. And they struggled, you know, to finish inside last year. Here's this high low, took a second to get into it, but, you know, you just, that body's too big. They went 0 for 22 inside of four feet last year in a game against Oklahoma. Right. Impossible. Which is imp in a peewee game, that's impossible. <laughs> Forget high level Division I basketball from a 6'9, 6'10 front line. Yeah. She weighs 6'9, 260, Culver 6'10, 255. Jordan McCabe back into the game for West Virginia. Mountaineers lead back down to six. He's being guarded by the Nebraska transfer, Charlie Easley. Culver shapes up. Ball swings to the right side, Osaboyan. Well, the Jackrabbits played that defensive sequence exactly how they wanted to. They'll live with that. They're not going to guard Osaboyan out there. He's a non-shooter, and they'll allow Culver to take that shot. Nothing they can do about Culver on that. Off the turnover, an easy two for the Mountaineers. Back to an eight-point game. Arians draws a double team, and he turns it over. Second straight takeaway, has Sherman on the run, dump it off for Deuce. Back come the Jackrabbits. Detlinger missed it, got it back. That young man credits his work ethic to his parents, and you can see it out there when he plays basketball. Yeah, he can. He's really physical understands his limitations, plays hard. He might be their best passer, too. Sherman fouled on the floor before the shot. Uh, Derek Culver imposing his well here in the open floor, showing you the dexterity, the deafness from the big fella. Chris Patola, we're enjoying a good show by a couple of lead guards. Friedel with 12 to lead the Jackrabbits, and McBride has been doing it throughout. In just his third career start for the Mountaineers, 16 points. But certainly not doing it alone. I mean, uh, look at the stat line for Derek Culver. He's into double figures in rebounding. Oh, what is new? Along with four block shots, couple of assists, couple of steals. You know, the thing, too, about those two guards, they're such competitors. You know, they've done it on the defensive end, too. A lot of things that won't even show up in a stat sheet. You know, diving on the floor, deflections. With McCabe in the game, he's back at the point with McBride playing off the ball. On the other wing is that man, Taz Sherman, who certainly has the stroke tonight. Yes. Well, the West Virginia coaching staff, they weren't liars. Th those guys have shot it well, and, and we heard a lot about that from the preseason, and they have certainly done that. Slow start, but they have certainly done that tonight. McNeil and Sherman. And, you know, while neither of them shot it to what was hoped of them last year, both were in the low 30s. It wasn't like yeah. they tanked, but they just didn't shoot to their potential, which we have seen a glimpse of so far here tonight. WVU with the basketball leading by nine. Just about midway through the second half of our third quarterfinal. Here's Sherman. Sherman did a nice job getting out, maybe making that a little farther than Sherman wanted to be. Culver had it poked away, but the foul comes. Dentlinger picks up the personal. And that is his fourth. And so the 6'8 redshirt junior from Arcadia, Iowa, heads to the bench.
Culver. Shireman thought he might have had the back door cut. Instead finds Friedel, and he's got a shot at a four-point play. He is a shot maker. Good shooter, but a shot maker who loves big moments. And he's had the response. You know, each time West Virginia tries to extend here, extend the differential, Friedel has had the response. He's a young man who originally committed to play at Wright State, but had a change of heart, didn't want to go as far as Dayton, Ohio away. So he is from T, South Dakota, and decided to go to South Dakota State, which is in Brookings, less than an hour north of here. You know, 100 years ago, T, South Dakota was actually called Byron, South Dakota. And the Postal Service said there are too many Byrons, we have to change the name. They went through 10 iterations. They met as a, it's a small town. They met, went through 10 different iterations, couldn't come to a conclusion. They broke for T, and somebody said, hey, we should go by T, South Dakota. That's how the name came to be, Doug Sherman. I bet you didn't know I knew that. I didn't, but I'm not surprised, and you and I have to work together more often. And if there's anybody from T listening, you you tell me if I'm wrong. <laughs> I'm telling you, that is the true story. Now, I'm guessing you didn't show up in South Dakota two days ago knowing that. Curiosity got the better of you, you and you went fishing on Wikipedia. What are you saying? <laughs> what are you saying? I go anywhere. I, I want to know everything about it. Well, it is an unusual name. And I am certain that there are people in T, South Dakota watching right now and pumping out their chests a little bit because their native son, Noah Friedel, is playing very well on national television. Mm, so is Sean McNeil. My goodness, putting it on the floor now. You know, and he looks stronger. He looks, he's healthy, he looks strong. Arians finds the cutter and the foul given underneath. It'll be a non-shooting foul. Oh, no, it is a shooting foul. So two shots coming up for Wilson. There's so much competition at that guard position. They're so deep, West Virginia is this year. They've got two guys in almost every position. They're deep in the backcourt. And so, you know, you think about lacing it up in practice every day. You gotta, you gotta show up ready every single day. And, and McNeil has certainly come back this season, at least in game one here. Let's not get over ahead of our skis. He, but he has played well tonight. Douglas Wilson pulls the Jackrabbits back within six. McBride, a little change of pace, and how about the help side? Wilson coming over to block it out of bounds, and that'll take us to our under eight timeout. Everything you heard about Sean McNeil coming into this season, it's true, folks. Look at a little touch off the glass. The kiss from Sean McNeil. Raft. Wow. Oh, how about that? I don't even think he knows that word. <laughs> You know, that's the thing about Ivy Leaguers. Dallin Cup always got a flex. Pride of Columbia. Yeah. Well, you won't be hearing that word out of me. You know what? You see the scheduling there. It's been just crazy. And everybody who follows college basketball understands what's been going on the last several weeks and, and specific to this tournament, certainly. But you know what? The West Virginia Mountaineers got some big news they announced earlier today regarding their schedule just getting a lot more difficult because a week from today, West Virginia is going to be playing number one Gonzaga in Indianapolis. That is one of the things I love about Bob Huggins. He will play anybody, anywhere, at any time. And the same can be said for Mark Few. You know, the and schedule he's put 100%. together, it, it's a great matchup. And again, with all these matchups that we see on the schedule upcoming, as 
South Dakota State pulls back within six. You just keep your fingers crossed yep. and hope that these games can come to pass. But that's an easy one to pass on. You, you know what I mean? Like, that's not a game that they were originally going to play. And West Virginia let, says, let's do this. So that's the Jimmy V Classic. Number one Gonzaga against West Virginia. The Mountaineers have been called into service. Shibwe lays it in. Nice offense there to take the place of Tennessee. Of course, the Volunteers have had multiple positive tests, including their head coach, Rick Barnes. And so the Vols have been shut down for a little bit. And uh, the Mountaineers step up. That'll be 7 o'clock a week from tonight on ESPN. Mm. Arians, he works that baseline nicely. Oh, and, and we've seen a lot of that backdoor cut. The pressure release when you're being denied. And another really, like you said, nice pass. McNeil has his pocket pick. Friedel, Euro step, unable to finish, but the tip in by Douglas Wilson. Always have to assume a miss. And if you're hungry to score, you'll follow a play like that. And Douglas Wilson, what a, what a tip to make it a four-point game. McKay. Rebounding foul. And it's on Shibwe. Here's his back cut. And we've seen this a lot tonight. When heads are turned, as McCabe's is, you know, that, that play has been there all night. You've got everybody lifted off of that baseline. And so that baseline's clear. You get a step on McCabe. And that backdoor pass has been delivered nicely here tonight. Well, Chris, what should Shibwe have done? He was the backline defender yeah. in the middle of the paint who had to come up. Yep. So what's he supposed to do? Well, he didn't have to come up that high. Okay. Because the play, again, the, the, the screen is being played, being made. You don't have to come up that high to help. Timeout. Five and a half remaining. It's a four-point ball game. Be sure to check out the 2K Empire Classic presented by Continental. And there is some good basketball going on right now over on ESPN. 18th ranked Arizona State is being pushed to the limit. The Rams with a one point lead. Still lots of time to go, about 11 minutes remaining. And then the second game will be Villanova Boston College coming up at around 9.30 Eastern on ESPN. And so far this first day of the long awaited, much anticipated college basketball season, no ranked teams yeah. have suffered defeat so far, but we've got two. One on ESPN, one on ESPN2 right now being pushed. Yes, sir. I'll tell you what, the Colin Gillespie, one of my favorite guards to watch play. And he's one of those guys, you look at the lineage of guards at Villanova, Jalen Brunson, Ryan Archidiacono, and now Colin Gillespie. And they've all learned from one another over the years. And none of those three guys overwhelm you physically mm -hmm. they just play basketball the right way and like yeah. you say they learn from each other and when they have been teammates have played off each other brilliantly yeah you know, Chris Mack when he was at Xavier playing against Jalen Brunson had a great line he said you take his you take his face off and there's wires underneath I mean they just think the game at such a high level I'll tell you what you talk about performances today how about Cade Cunningham mm. he is the real deal he reminds me a lot of Grant Hill. You remember how great, how smooth yeah. Grant Hill was? Even as a freshman, he almost like glided through spaces and, and he was so smooth out there. Cunningham today reminded me a lot of, a lot of Grant Hill and how he moved. Yeah, Ho-Hum college debut, 20 and 10. Yeah. In uh, a win for the Oklahoma State Cowboys at UTA. West Virginia by six. Mountaineers ranked 15th in the country in the preseason. Picked third in the preseason Big 12 poll behind Baylor one and Kansas two. Texas picked fourth. Coach Huggins now 67 years old. Native son, of course, of Morgantown, West Virginia. He's a true original. He is West Virginia through and through. And even though he did play his high school basketball over in the state of Ohio, he came back when he had the opportunity, played his final three years of basketball in Morgantown. And while he has left for his 
career. Had a long coaching stint at Cincinnati, of course, and a briefer stop at Kansas State. He has been a West Virginia native son yes. right from day one. And I heard him tell a story the other day that at some point along the way, Tash Sherman hits the three. The Miami Heat offered him $5 million to take their job, and he said no. How can it get better than what I have here? This is long before he was making the money that he's making now at West Virginia. That was life-changing money that he turned down to stay in the college ranks. Well, we're the beneficiaries. Illegal screen against Winget. Was up by 16. They're up two now. Spatola, Doug, back to you. Thank you, sir. 73-64. West Virginia has threatened a couple of times to get a little separation. Got it to double figures, but the Jackrabbits, led by that man, Noah Friedel, have hung tough. They have. They've had a response. You know, we'll see here the, if the physical, you know, the physicality of West Virginia and how hard they defend you, it, it has a cumulative effect, and it just hasn't really had it on this tough South Dakota State team. And while West Virginia has not shot it better from the perimeter than they did a year ago, right at that same 28%, they have made some shots. Miles McBride is one off his career high with 21, and Sean McNeil, who has made some threes, has his career high with 14 points to help West Virginia. You know, a big part of it, too, for, for West Virginia is shot selection. Like, a lot of times, the wrong guys are taking these perimeter shots. And if you go back, and, and Bob Huggins is going to rewatch this game at some point, at the beginning of this game, I mean, you had Cottrell come in. He was firing 18-foot shots. You just had guys taking shots, trying to settle into this thing that they shouldn't be taking. And I think that's a big part. McNeil, Sherman, McBride, those guys need to be taking a bulk of your perimeter threes. Everybody else, that ball's got to be going towards the front of the rim. They are sending both teams back to their respective benches. And we will have a review. The coaches seem to be enjoying themselves. I mean, this is obviously the first game that either of these teams has played this year. No exhibitions, no scrimmages uh, of note as we're accustomed to. So I would think that some of the kinks being worked out, especially for the younger Mountaineers that you were just talking about, Chris, would have potentially been worked out by now under more normal circumstances. Yeah. Know exactly what they were looking at. Uh, I guess who, who the shooter was. It's the man with the headband, of course. I don't know how you miss. I don't know how he missed that guy. You know, that is one thing, though, Doug, I will say. I watched a lot of games today, and obviously we, we, we've watched this one. The officiating has been pretty good. Yeah. I mean, let's not forget, it's the first one for these guys to what you're saying. And all day long, it's been pretty good for, for day one. Under three and a half minutes remaining. West Virginia looking to work some clock and get a good shot. McNeil uses the screen on second thought. Osaboyan. It's deflected, I believe, out of bounds. The officials look at each other, and indeed it will stay at this end with three on the shot clock. Deuce McBride, the trigger man. McNeil uses the screen for a wide open three, but he missed it. Shireman. Ball knocked away. Miles McBride to the rim, lost it on the way up. And Shireman gets possession and is granted the timeout. 
We'll take a break for the timeout. 2.42 on the clock. West Virginia clinging to the lead. I'm Doug Sherman back in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Good game between West Virginia and South Dakota State. And now let's take a look at tonight's plays of the game brought to you by Complete Sports Management. The passing of South Dakota State has been outstanding tonight. Guys have moved without the basketball and passers have found them in a number of different ways. That back cut has been so big for South Dakota State tonight. Well, you get a sense watching the Jackrabbits play why they are picked to finish ahead of teams like Oral Roberts and North Dakota State in the Summit League. This was a 22-win team a year ago. Much of that roster is back. Wilson misses on the jump hook, but coming out of the timeout, they did exactly what Absolutely. they were hoping to do. That's a great look, and that's a shot he normally hits. Sherman. Culver. Tries to corral it, but had it taken away by Noah Friedel. How about Friedel? Winget. How about Friedel? How about Friedel again? <laughs> Told you triple doubles not off the table for him. He is having some kind of game. Although it's getting late on the assist. He's been stuck on five assists for a while. Wilson again, this time attacks and is able to finish and draw the foul. And that's Friedel. Yeah, he reads the defense. It was a, it was a good play by, by Wilson, recognizing Friedel gets doubled here, and he just slips to the basket. And the help comes late. I mean, Osaboyan's late. And if you're going to foul him, which is not a bad play, you cannot allow him to get that up to the basket. Wilson now with a team high 17 points. Friedel has 16 points, eight rebounds, six assists. Back to a four-point game. This is an important possession. Ten on the shot clock. An offensive set that just didn't produce much of anything for West Virginia. Well, it wasn't a set. They just kind of dribbled, dribbled, dribbled. Off the hands of a jackrabbit, back to WVU. This ball in this possession's got to be put in Miles McBride's hand, and you got to get him going to the basket. Get the ball up on the rim, and, and at least give your shot, your, your team a chance to offensive rebound. McNeil looks off the defender, gets into the paint. Mm. Nice drive and dish, and the finish on the reverse. And they, right. want, they wanted that matchup with Winjet, and McNeil just goes right by him. Oh, Saboyan makes it a six point game, 40 seconds remaining. Wilson draws the contact. Oh, Saboyan, another rebound. Nice job by Culver, bodying up. McNeil lays it in, adding to his career high. McBride blocks it, shot clock is off. The Jackrabbits yet to concede the foul given by Winget. And now for tonight's player of the game, brought to you by Bad Boy Mowers. Better start talking about this guy nationally. He is going to be one of the best, best players, not just in the Big 12, but in the country. Deuce McBride has had a phenomenal offseason after a great freshman year, and he was spectacular tonight. Once he took over, Doug, once he got it going, you, you kind of felt comfortable with West Virginia. You know, their offense was struggling until he really took over in the middle part of that first half. Very much under control, getting the start at the point in this season opener. He's now got a new career high with 23 points, the son of former Xavier Musketeer, Walt McBride. Shireman connects.
And that'll do it. West Virginia gets this highly anticipated season off to a 79-71 start with a hard-fought win over South Dakota State. So the Mountaineers advance to the semifinals tomorrow afternoon here in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. That'll do it for now. We've got another quarterfinal coming up in about 30 minutes. But we send it back to the studio. Dallin and Jordan, take it away. College basketball.